Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by Moodogs Frugal RCs and more. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial kind of geared for the beginning uh, hobbyist or someone that's never really dealt with a hobby grade car before. Uh, maybe you guys are into drones, maybe you're into cars, but just never really had uh, a hobby grade uh, vehicle, a true hobby grade. Now this is the Piranha uh, TR10 by Red Cat. I've got a couple of videos already on my channel. One is an unboxed overview and the other one is my um, Urban Assault uh, kind of review video i'll post links in the description for both those videos if you guys want to check them out today what we're going to be doing is showing the two different types of batteries that this car is compatible with um, and how to switch over the esc to accept different voltages uh, and different uh, uh, power uh, currents i guess power waves uh, from the two different battery types now the battery that this does come with is a 2000 milliamp per hour nickel metal hydride uh, battery this is their battery uh, hexfly uh, this is is um, pretty much standard for when you get these types of cars. This is the battery you're going to get. Maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, you might, with some other vehicles, you might get a larger capacity. Uh, but this is the stock battery with the four millimeter banana connector on it. The car is currently set up to run a LiPo battery. I did some experimentation uh, using LiPos. So I'm going to show you how to switch it back uh, from LiPo over to the original nickel metal hydride chemistry. Uh, first thing we need to do is um, I'm going to open up the canopy here take this uh, body off of the uh, frame here we'll take a look at the underside I'm going to show you a product that I purchased uh, from Red Cat now I could have built this myself but it's basically an adapter all the batteries I use that are um, lipos are going to have a Dean's type connector on so in other words a connector like this they call us a T style uh, or just your your basic Dean's uh, style connector on here now this is a lipo battery uh, this is from the quadcopter but I have been using uh, several of these in this car with pretty good results um, and I'm going to show you guys the adapter in just a second here let's go ahead and get this uh, body taken off of here I'll pull the body off and I'll be right back with you guys all right guys let's get these last two pins out here and just to show you real quick now this is nothing that i invented i've seen guys do this before uh, but with these pins uh and it, you mix these p small pins like this and large meaty fingers and it could sometimes be kind of fidgety to pull these out and put them in this kind of gives you a little extra tail all this is is a uh, wire wrap or wire tie zip tie some people call them i did not invent this again guys i just saw some people doing it a lot of people doing this with their rc vehicles it kind of gives you a little extra tail too it's kind of easier to keep track of these as well so let's go ahead and get the last one out of here and set these aside we'll pull the body off of the frame here and we can take a look at the car once again uh, the area we're going to be working with today is going to be under this shroud right here and i'm actually going to go ahead and remove that shroud and get some of the wiring out of the way so it's easier for us to see uh what's what, what exactly is entailed in this process pretty simple you probably could get at this uh by just taking these uh motor leads and disconnecting the motor leads and pulling that wire back and just shushing stuff off to the side you may want to pull the um the servo wire off uh, of where uh it's connected because right in front of that servo wire is what the area that we're going to be dealing with where that little plastic uh shunt is that we're going to have to be moving and you'll see that as the video progresses but what i wanted to show you now guys is this is set up for lipo battery uh the esc is set right now to run lipos um and in order to run a lipo you're going to have to adapt from this type of plug which is a four millimeter uh four millimeter banana style plug down to a or up to depending on how you want it to look at it a uh, dean style or whatever style connector that your lipo battery has on it now all my batteries have dean style connectors on them like this okay so um I have a lot of batteries, a lot of LiPos, and a lot of batteries, uh, all those batteries, or most of them have this type of connector. I do have a couple of SEMA um, X8 batteries that have the barrel style connector, but they're smaller, so they don't, they're not compatible with this uh, particular connector. That's a different story. So what I wanted to do is get an adapter. Now I could have built this myself, but I decided not to. I decided just to get it pre-made. Um, it'd be easier for me to do. Uh, not that I couldn't solder the thing together in about 10 minutes, but there's less components to buy right now and kind of more cost effective for me uh this is a red cat branded product i'm going to be showing you here guys uh this is a uh the part number is st uh dash 4b 
I guess as in barrel, T-O-T. So this is a, a Red Cat branded product. I'm not a show for Red Cat. I'm not trying to sell their products. I just found something that's working for me and I'm excited about it and I wanted to share that with you guys out there. So this is a this is what it looks like, guys. It's a small little probably four inch wire here. Uh, you have your Dean style male connector on this end here. And on this other end, you have the uh, four millimeter barrel. Now that would just connect directly into here. So this connects to your battery. So we're gonna get my my LiPo battery, and we're going to go ahead and connect the uh, two male and female together there. So now you made that connection. Now we've actually adapted down or up to, however you want to look at it again, uh, the uh, style connector that the car has on it, which is the four millimeter barrel. And then you would just connect positive, positive, negative to negative. And you want to make sure when you're making any kind of connections, even if it's your, uh, your, your stock battery, which has the four millimeter barrel on it, you want to make sure that you're pressing these on there all the way. You don't want to cause any air gaps or any kind of gaps between uh, the, the, the metal, the, the, the copper inside this barrel and the copper inside this barrel. Uh, if you start doing that, you're going to cause arcing that can cause extra heat, can start the thing on fire. You want to avoid that. So you want to make sure this is pressed on all the way. Um, I haven't, I don't have it pressed on right now all the way because I'm going to be removing it right now. And that's pretty much the, the way that works. Uh, pretty nice, neat little, uh, neat little assembly here, right around six or seven dollars. And I'll have a link in the description for that as well. So let's get into how this actually is all going to play out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this car apart, not really take it apart. I'm going to remove the shroud here. There's two, um, 2.5 millimeter, uh, cap screws. You can see uh, on either side here, one there and one there, and this whole assembly Assembly will come off. I'm going to disconnect the motor uh, leads and take off the spoiler just so we can see everything. Uh, it's just easier to see everything uh, that's going on here if I don't have this uh, in the way. I want to make sure that we're, we're seeing this uh, it, uh, good enough here. So we'll go ahead and pull this um, out of the way and set this off to the side for now. You can now see the ESC and this is just uh, taped in here. So there's double sided tape inside of here and actually while I have this out of here I'm going to go ahead and replace that double sided tape and just kind of blow this area out a little bit but you can see the ESC right now this is the uh, uh, combination ESC uh, and uh, receiver all in one here. Uh, we have the heat sink up in front. We have our three wire servo and right to the front of that guys is the, the shunt that we're talking about moving. So this little guy right here I'll get the I'll go ahead and zoom in on that so we can see it. This is the guy right here. Okay, so we're going to be taking this guy out and moving it over one pin uh, to go for the nickel metal hydride. Now you can see on here it says nickel metal hydride chemistry and lipo chemistry. So it is set up for lipo chemistry. You can see on here the pictorial they're showing one pin exposed on the left side and that's exactly what we've got going on here right now. And we're going to change it over to the nickel metal hydride side because I got a battery pack I'm going to be running through this today. So let's go ahead and do that now. The easiest way to do this, guys, and some people will get a, you could probably get a, a small electronics um, tweezers in there and pull that out of there and uh, just move it over that way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, servo plug in the back here. It will just very gently but firmly uh, try to grasp most of the plug, wiggle it a little bit, and just pull it out of place. Now you want don't want to be reefing on that real hard because you could pull these connectors out of the small little plug here and then you'd have to do uh, you'd have to probably uh, I don't know you have to get a crimper and crimp new wires it's just could be a pain in the butt so this is what we're going to be removing and moving over to cover this pin now I've got a small needle nose pliers here I'm going to pull this out with I mean, we could do it however you wanted to do it if you can get your fingers in there to do it it's fine um, this isn't that that delicate of an item but you still want to make sure that you're not you're not um uh you, you know you don't want to ham fist this thing because it is it is electronics i've got it pulled up a little bit of the way so i'm gonna go ahead and take my fingers and just kind of pull this out and up so now we've got all three uh pins exposed here and we're going to go ahead and cover these two on this side so we're going to go ahead and uh line the holes up on the bottom here you can see we've got kind of a shunt there and we're gonna line the uh, holes up on the bottom with these two pins. 
and firmly press them into place gently but firmly again again we're not building bridges here we're not hand fisting anything we want to we want to make sure that that's covering properly uh, but we don't want to exert too much force on that because they are uh, just small copper uh, pins and we don't want to break them now we can go ahead and plug our servo back in uh, to its socket below that and that will just seat in there like so and that's pretty much it